Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are now joined once again here by Dr. Maureen Hozier from Los Angeles, California. She's a great friend of the show, clinical psychologist, and she's been helping us in her podcast uh, really digest this whole relationship communication factor, which clearly um, a lot of us as adults are affected by uh, traumas, and it affects us to this day, no matter how old we are. Uh, But she's here uh, to talk in regards to her focus and her expertise, again, in relationships. So welcome back. Thank you. That was a great introduction. Thanks. I try. I try. Tell us more, (laughs) though, a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Uh, I have been interested in relationships since I had a relationship with my mother and father. Mm -hmm. So that's been kind of a long time. And um, my interest is in making is is understanding how to make relationships work. In fact, I'm writing another book. And I mean, to that goal is really understanding how what has to happen in order for a relationship to work because obviously they are not just automatic and they are not I think a lot of us go into relationships with a huge fantasy Mm -hmm. that I'm going to be cared about and loved I am going to be cared about and loved and then we find along the way maybe it's good for a while and then or maybe it starts out not being so good, but somewhere along the way, we find that our partners and and I are in conflict. And the conflict is about, well, you don't care about me. Yeah. And my partner is saying, well, you don't care about, about me. me. Mm-hmm. And so right there, that's going to go nowhere. Yeah, of course. Of course. And people are in an emotional state when they feel not cared about. Mm -hmm. And people are reacting, emotionally reacting, which means they're angry, they're stamping their feet they're walking out they're shutting down yeah get their um and not realizing that those moments even further ruin the relationship yeah but each are, are just what what we tend to do is just scream louder about what we want the other to do so we feel loved yeah and that's definitely not going to work Mm -hmm. but they those moments are can be important cues for us humans because we have a brain true that oh this isn't working. I wonder what's going on for us that it's not working rather than getting lost and overwhelmed by it not working. Yeah. So it's a cue. It's a, it's a sign and it's big signs over and over and over again, that uh, we're not getting along mm-hmm. in this relationship. We had such fantasies about. Yeah. So I understand that the emotional reactions tell us something about ourselves. And it we find out what our, mm, the word isn't weakness, uh, where our vulnerabilities are, what we're vulnerable to experiencing likely because we've chosen someone who's going to bring back our childhoods and vice versa it goes both ways 
we emotionally match, connect with someone that feels familiar. Yeah. We're humans where we have an unconscious uh, history and that's our childhood. Yeah. It's generally, you know, we're talking about people getting into relationships as teenagers and young adults and later. So prior to the relationship, we've had a history of relationship with our parents. Yep. So that's inside us. Our history, our experiences with our parents is inside us. Yeah. We're going to look for someone unconsciously yeah. familiar to us. Mm -hmm. that, that it kind of feels right to be with. Unfortunately, that means two things. One, we're going to have the opportunity to grow because things are going to come up between us that don't work. Mm -hmm. And number two, we have the opportunity to grow. True. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, if if humans could understand that that would be the time to get some help for their relationship dynamics, that that would be instead of one of the partners saying, no, I'm not going to go to therapy. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's not wanting to be involved in going to therapy really doesn't want to have the relationship work. They want to have the relationship work for them, yeah. but not for two people. Yeah. So, I mean, we really are gaining a lot of information now about how much, how unconsciously we partners and what we have to learn. So if we could understand it that way, then maybe it could be more hopeful Yeah. instead of so traumatic. Yeah. But, but generally when people get into that place, it's very traumatic and, and difficult and frightening Ugh. and feeling pretty hopeless. <clears throat> and, um, it, it's just, it's a sad, sad place. So what has to happen for parents is that they understand that their child needs to feel cared about. about. And the, uh, yeah. Yeah, they need to have the experience of being cared about even when they're brats yeah, and demanding what they're de demanding because children, that's normal development for children. It's uh, they want what they want. And so we see adults in relationships that aren't working, want what they want. So they're regressed and want what they want and yeah. just demand it just like a kid. So that tells you the, the emotional development of that oh. couple, mm -hmm. which would be me, 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 me. Hmm. Yeah. And th that was not going to work in a relationship. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. So how does a parent care about a child without giving up themselves it's oh, a great question i deal with that on a daily basis i have a five and seven year old and i live alone and i raise them and i've given up a lot of myself but people say this is what you have to do and i'm like i just want a little bit of me back a little bit of me time but i chose this yeah but, but <laughs> well that yeah, yeah that, you're not going to have a lot of me time yeah yeah, but I think you can feel good about how you handle the, the time that you have with them. Yeah, 
I do. I do. And and that would be about your your being there for them when you need them to change a behavior or how they handle something. Mm -hmm. What's going the way that they're going to learn how to do that is for you to care about them. Mm -hmm. And caring about them means that you're helping them learn something new. Yeah. Yeah. And so it isn't about punishing them necessarily. It can be that, you know, you can figure out a way to help them begin to understand what you want. But there's also reasoning and understanding on your part about why they handled it the way they handled it for kids. Mm -hmm. So they, they're needing to learn to handle it in a way that they don't know how. And the only way they're going to know how is if you handle it in the way that you know how. Yeah. So they feel cared about mm -hmm. rather than invisible. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely does. Yeah. So that's where your time goes in is in helping you know is stopping the conflict between them or you know the the <laughs> the stuff that they can get get into if you if if you want and and helping them so, first of all understanding what they're doing makes mm -hmm. sense makes yeah. sense what they're doing mm -hmm. they don't know how to do it any other way True. So you're then coming in with understanding why what's going on that they're doing it the way they're doing it. And then you help them begin to learn over time. Mm -hmm. That's why you're with them for 18 to 20 years. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, to help them come to understand how to not emotionally react in their difficulties or conflicts or misses between people themselves and somebody else you help them learn how to handle things so they remain emotionally connected to the person mm -hmm. and can express what they need and want while their partner also can express what they need and want. So they couldn't work it out together. So you're helping them learn how to work with you mm -hmm. as you're working with them and caring about them and understanding, I mean, you know, what they're doing. But most, most many adults, we've come from... Um, an authoritarian relationship style where it's about power. Yeah. So you can see why our lives now, our adult lives now, are facing many issues about power. Because a lot of people want and need power. Yeah. That means there has to be somebody. Something underneath them who are being manipulated and uh, driven or have to give up themselves in order to make a, a, the relationship work. So what you're working on is a, is a relationship, even with your children like this, yeah. we're, we're, we're equal humans. What we're, what we're looking at now in our lives and in oh, God, so many areas is a relationship like this. Yeah. It just, it, it, people are needing power and money and, and um, influence and um, 
which really sets, sets up a huge divide between those that are in power and those that don't have power and, and they're feeling terrible about themselves. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense what's happening in our world, unfortunately. Yep. And, and, and the other issue, and I've said this before, is we have to have a relationship with our, with our planet. Our humans are not going to make it. Yeah. And I often begin to wonder if we're that stupid. We might be. Yeah. So relationships, as I, as I have said before, are the bedrock of our existence. Yeah. With each other and with our planet. And um, I, I have concerns about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's hard enough, you know, trying to have two people begin to uh, learn from their emotional reactions about what's going on at their emotional reacting and attempting to stop, stop. their yeah. young behaviors mm -hmm. their emotionally young behaviors for example blaming for example screaming to be heard uh for example uh yelling at others for example physical abuse uh emotional abuse all those things can tell us something about ourselves if we're willing to begin to look at things that way yeah. but that's hard because power is kind of invigorating for people yeah. not even kind of it's very invigorating and dynamic mm -hmm. for for people so i don't know jill <laughs> I don't know either. You're the expert, right? But um, right. But we've all had problems with relationships, and still to this day, you do. And does there ever come a point where you really get over the childhood trauma and you can really live a normal, happy, wonderful life, or is it always going to be there? We're always going to be reminded. You always, of it. We... <laughs> you always ask the best questions. But oh, you. it's just the truth. I'm like, ah, broken. But... It isn't that we get over? And it's that we begin to under, want to understand ourselves. And we can do that. The cue is our emotional reaction. Yeah. What's going on? And the words for me are always the same. What's going on for me mm -hmm. that I'm emotionally reacting in this situation? Yeah. Okay. So that means that I have to hopefully, and I'm learning to, in that confrontation, is to stop myself from the emotional reactions. Mm -hmm. Reactions are telling me to stop. Yeah. Now I can figure them out later, you know, once I've left the situation, I can begin to wonder, okay, what happened for me that I was emotionally reacting? The reason that the emotional reaction is so important to us is that it's coming from our unconscious. Yeah. Coming from the past in the present. Yeah. And so I'm saying in that journey in, in a moment between two people, I'm learning to stop myself. Our reactions are such, they're so reflexive that it's fight or flight, freeze. There, I think in there somewhere, emotional reactions are so tied to those early beginnings. Yeah. 
we're just trying to save ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we're not, that doesn't help the relationship. Mm -hmm. So if there's two of us on board with, oh, sorry, 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 uh, let's, let's stop. Uh, you know, we, we've gotten into emotionally reacting with it or something, or, uh, or some people use a word that they, um, you know, say to one another, and it means for them to, to stop the, that interaction. However, a word tends to then be used by somebody for you to shut up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that one's a little difficult, I find. Uh, two people really have to be on board with that. Mm -hmm. But when it's used as the weapon, then in the emotional confrontation, uh, that that really doesn't work. No, it doesn't, um, does it? You know, the other thing that's really important, I had clients the other day or, or, uh, say to me, oh, we did go to Imago therapy. Yeah. And, and she said, oh, my God, it was great. There's a, a, a protocol for people to understand, to speak with one another. Yeah. When somebody's having emotional reactions inside of them, they will ask to have an Imago meeting with their partner. Mm -hmm. It works for both people. And then th there's a protocol for how they speak with one another. And it really isn't about speaking. It's about listening. Yep, of course. It's all about okay. that. Uh -huh. And it's about asking questions about <laughs> what you just heard your partner say. Uh, you know, how to get more information because each of you are working on understanding what's going on mm -hmm. for that the person who's speaking and you're listening. Yeah. And the protocol really works well for people to learn to listen. I think I told you earlier that my partner and I, you know, we would stop. Yeah, the, the argument. She would go to her room. I would go to my room, and then one of us would come back and say to the other, "I will listen." Mm -hmm. And we only listened and <laughs> asked questions about what the other was saying, so that we each of us understood the other's, other's point of view, place, mm -hmm. how they got there, what was going on for them, not about us. Mm -hmm. So there's no blaming, there's no power trip, there's no conflict. It's just, I'm listening to you because I care about you. And then you're listening to me and wanting to know what's going on for me because you care about me. So there's the whole thing, Jill. And <laughs> here it is in a nutshell. And... <laughs> And I mean, how, what, you know, you're doing this for a living. So day in and day out, you're guiding people, you're talking to people, you're giving them advice. Give me a percentage of how many couples really get and understand and can move forward. <laughs> well, you know what? It is, it's, it's a little different than that. I would say it, how many couples grow emotionally more mature. I. You know, I um, I really don't know. Um, I know people grow. I don't know often what happens with many of them. True. Um, I do have people that come back a lot. And I've been learning too. You know, I've, I've not been in a place 
where I've started out knowing what I know. I've had to learn as well. So I've learned with every everyone that comes in, I learn something new. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot of things new and are always refining. In fact, I, I go to sleep at night and I'm thinking about it and I wake up in the morning and I, I've got new information. So it's really, and I can help people better now in the moment because so much about their inter, their emotional reactions are about PTSD. Mm-hmm. And they don't even know it. But it's like you can tell this person is not the person that I've just spent days with and everything was fine. Mm -hmm. This person is a very different person right now. Yeah. And and I am catching that behavior. It's almost like a different voice comes out of them. You know, a different, they're a different person. Yeah. And so I'm seeing the trauma that's happened to them right in front of my eyes uh, and so now can get into that with them and and begin to help them recognize about their own emotional reaction is that familiar to them Mm -hmm. you know and then how is that familiar to them and and most of them are right into what's happened with the parents yeah they don't know that they're reacting that way. Huh. How much time do we have? Mm, two minutes. I have a client, uh, the, the wife of, of a guy that all of a sudden he, he erupts in, in his anger at two kids. Like somebody left the freezer door open. Mm-hmm. He explodes. Wow. Where does that come from? Yeah. Well, that's what happened to him. We are seeing right in that moment what happened by his parent to him. Yeah. It was a atomic blast. So it's so clear that that and it's not this is not who he is. Yeah. Generally so it's so clear to see the trauma that they've experienced. It's coming out of them. They're totally Directly. unaware of it. Mm-hmm. Totally unaware of it. Yeah. And, 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 and don't even know that they, that it was an atomic blast that came out of them. Yeah. Until then the wife says, you know, that's really not working for me you know, how you handle that. Yeah. Wow. So we're learning a lot. Totally are. It's all we can do. Yeah. It's all (sighs) we can do. And it'll come, it's coming in a good time for you. Yeah. Yeah. Learning. Yeah. So I don't repeat the mistakes that my mother made. And I'm one of those screamers. You're going to repeat them. Yeah. Okay. Learn Mm -hmm. from them. Okay. And grow inside. And we'll talk about that the next time. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much, Maureen. How can we reach you? Uh, Email M-A-U-R-R-R-E-E-E-N at yahoo.com. It's my name, three R's, three E's. And my phone number is 310-210-6772. Be happy to talk to anybody and help them direct them to, you know, what they might be needing if I can't work with them. Thank you so much. And pleasure speaking with you. Have a great day and a great weekend. Thank you, Dr. as well. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action.
Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.